Hi guys! I am coming at you today with some awesome book recommendations that I think you guys will really enjoy. Um, now I know probably some of you guys are thinking, I'm not a reader, like I don't, you know, I don't really want to do any of this, and I get that. Sometimes I just want to Netflix and binge, but I'm telling you, the books that I'm going to talk to you guys about today beat anything that's on Netflix. I guarantee it. Uh, because even though the world is, you know, looking a little different, um, sometimes the best thing we can do is curl up with a good book and enjoy a good story. So I really hope that these books I'm going to share with you guys pique your interest and something that you guys will want to check out. The first one I want to talk to you guys about is called Spin and this is by Colleen Nelson. And Spin follows 15-year-old Delilah, or also known as Dizzy. And she lives with her dad and her brother. It, her dad owns this vintage record shop. And she loves and is really good at DJing. And she loves spinning records. And she's really good at it. And so she's working at her dad's shop. And she is, you know, going to school and doing her thing, right? There's also kind of a huge secret. That the, that the whole family has. So while she is living with her dad and her brother, her mom is kind of like a world famous musician, like think Beyonce level musician, right? But nobody knows that that's her mom. However, because, you know, plot, her mom for the first time in like 10 years is actually going to be having a concert in Dizzy's hometown. So naturally, Cat comes out of the bag that Dizzy is is her daughter, right? So everyone is like, oh my gosh, that's your mom? So Dizzy is kind of caught between a rock and a hard place because on one end, she has this amazing life with her dad and her brother, and she's working really hard to become a DJ, right? Well, on the other side, she has her world famous mom who she really doesn't even know that well but her mom has can open so many more doors for her and her ambitions to become a DJ. So Dizzy's kind of stuck. Does she stay with the family that she has or does she go with the family and the dreams that she wants? Um, I like this book because it's told in multiple perspectives. So it follows not only our main character Dizzy, but it also goes to the points of view of her dad and her brother which is really interesting, I think, because it really talks, it really affects the whole family, you know? Um, so this is Spin by Colleen Nelson. So uh, I really do recommend this one. Um, another book that I recommend is for you guys who like historical fiction, you like books about World War II, this is the book for you. So this one is called Making Bombs for Hitler. I'm sure probably, probably some of you guys have already read this, um, but I had did not read it until recently and it was amazing and if you haven't read it I highly recommend now is your time to check it out. So Making Bombs for Hitler and this one is by Marsha Forchek Skypook and I apologize profusely if I mispronounce that. Um, but this one follows um, Lydia and Lydia lives with her family in the Ukraine during World War II. And things are obviously not really good. She is witnessing all of her Jewish neighbors, you know, being forced to leave their homes and go off to concentration camps. Um, and Lydia sees this, but she thinks, well, I'm not Jewish, so, you know, it's, I'm safe, right? Wrong. Uh, Lydia and her sister are soon uh, forced also to leave their homes and they are forced to be sent to these camps that they have to work uh, for the Nazis. So she's separated from her parents, separated from her sister, and she is now forced to literally make bombs for Nazi Germany. And Lydia is obviously uh, appalled at this. You know, she is, you know, she is totally against what the Nazis represent and she misses her family and she is forced to make these bombs, right? Well, Lydia decides, what if she makes duds? What if she sabotages these bombs? You know, what if she is supposed to make them, but she makes them so they don't explode, right? 
Well, doing that is going to put her own life in peril. Um, so and then you got to figure out, like, does she have a plan for escape? What's going to happen if they find out that she is not doing her job? There's a lot going on in this book. And I love it because it's, it's so small, but it really does pack a punch. So if you like historical fiction, and especially if you are into, like, World War II, I highly recommend Making Bombs for Hitler. Um, we're going to shift gears now. So for all of you guys who are my sports fans out there, or if you really enjoy graphic novels, I've, I got a book for you. This one is called Dragon Hoops, and this one is by Gene Yang. This name might sound familiar to you guys. He has written so many great graphic novels, such as Boxers and Saints. He's also written uh, The Shadow Hero. Um, he is a phenomenally talented uh, graphic novelist, and this one is his latest. This one's called Dragon Hoops. So this one's kind of semi-autobiographical. So it follows Jean Yang, and he is working in a high school. And Jean was not that much into sports. They called him Stick. All right, he wasn't. He was more of an artist, right? He wasn't exactly, you know, playing into sports, right? So he's working at this high school. And all anybody can talk about is the varsity basketball team, all right? Because literally, guys, this year is their year. They might make it to the California State Championships, all right? We can't have basketball, you know, in real life. We can have it in fiction, right? So Gene is like, I don't get it. Everybody's talking about this basketball team, you know? So he decides to follow this team and he's like, let me kind of get to know them. So this book follows um, the players and the coaches during their year of playing and it deals with all of the challenges and triumphs of their season. And it looks like a big book, but uh, in, in Jean Yang style, you've got great illustrations and it does a really good job of storytelling. And I like it too because it deals a lot with like breaking down those traditional stereotypes, right? Because even though we all have our own niches, like we're all the same and we all have, you know, similar interests and everything. So even though we might, you know, go about different ways, um, I like this book because it really does break down a lot of those stereotypes that tend to separate us. So this one is Dragon Hoops by Jean Yang. I think you guys will really enjoy this one. Uh, my next book, we're kind of taking a break from fiction and we're going to hop into nonfiction. Now, before you roll your eyes, all right, don't roll your eyes when I say nonfiction. I promise you this one is a good one. All right, so our nonfiction book is called We Are Not Yet Equal, Understanding Our Racial Divide by Carol Anderson. Um, and I like this book because, you know, it talks a lot about in order for us to understand what's going on in our world right now with the injustices, we need to go back into history um, and kind of figure out, you know, everything that has happened has kind of led us up to this moment. She does a really good job of kind of taking you on this journey from slavery to the end of the, during the Civil War and the end of the Civil War and talking about different policies and different um, laws that were going on in America that have kind of led us to where we are right now. So she does a great job of talking about, like I said, the end of the Civil War. We talk about um, Brown versus Board of Education. Um, there's a lot of different talks about civil rights in here. And inevitably we do catch up to um, like President Obama and the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, it does a really good job of explaining um, kind of what's going on so that way you guys can get a better idea of what's happening. So this is We Are Not Yet Equal. I highly recommend this one if you guys kind of want a, a better idea, a better understanding of what's going on and how you, you can participate. All right, and my final book that I wanna share with you guys is called Swing, and this is by Kwame Alexander. Um, and he is a popular author, so you guys have probably seen his books around. He has written books like Solo, The Crossover, and Rebound. Um, and his books are really awesome because they're not told in the traditional way, they're told in prose. So a lot of his books are told with like uh, short words on each page 
which is kind of cool. So it goes by kind of fast. Um, so this one is about two best friends, um, Walt and Noah. Um, Noah also goes by Swing, right? So Noah and Walt are best friends and they try so hard to be cool, right? They're like, we're gonna make the baseball team, we're gonna do X, Y, and Z, and none of that actually happens. Um, they don't make the baseball team, you know, and they kind of, they're kind of in their own world together. And to make matters worse, Noah has like a huge crush on Sam, right? But Sam has, fir has firmly put him in the friend zone, all right? So, when Walt and Noah decide to go get a gift for Noah's mom, they come across in a thrift store some uh, like an old container full of love letters. So Noah is convinced like this is his ticket, right? So he starts reading all these love letters. He's like, I'm going to write love letters to Sam to make her fall in love. Does this work? I don't know. But along the way, they also, Walt and Noah also kind of find a love of swing music. So it's like old jazz music. And along the way, they kind of discover that maybe instead of being cool, they can be their own version of cool. Because nothing is cooler than being yourself and living your truth, right guys? So I hope these titles caught your interest. Again, we're going to go through them real quick one more time in case you missed it. We've got Swing by Kwame Alexander. We've also got We Are Not Yet Equal by Carol Anderson. Dragon Hoops by Jean Yang. Making Bombs for Hitler by Marsha Forchek Skypuk. And last but certainly not least, we've got Spin by Colleen Nelson. These books are all available at the Worthington Library. You guys can reserve them and you can pick them up for curbside pickup or also you guys can utilize your smartphones or any kind of devices that you have and you can do e-audiobooks or e-books uh, e as well. Alright guys, I hope you found a title that sparks your interest and I can't wait to hear what you think about them. Bye!